Let's see, does it work? It does. So today I will be presenting you uh, the following paper entitled Neural Markers of Performance States in an Olympic Athlete. An EEG case study in air pistol shooting. So it's but the first time we present a case study uh, with EEG and I think it will be like very cool to, to discuss the finding and the results, especially with the methodology used to, to present uh, the, the to analyze the data. But first, since people were asking me already talking about this uh, uh, part of the title, disclaimer. So I'm not promoting the use of guns, just to be clear. Uh, I'm not a fan of guns, not at all, and I do not own any guns. That's okay, and that has to be clear. <laughs> However, since Fotini put it in the email, you may already know that I take part to some events in which I have to dress up funny and do these things. Wow, okay. So technically, what I'm holding here is not a gun. It's a sport equipment. It's <laughs> libera vendita. So you can buy it, you don't need a gun permit or whatever. It, what it does, it just use, uses compressed air to shoot some small pellets like these. They go at a speed of like 180 meters per second, and they had to just hit a piece of paper, something like this, even smaller. Uh, but first of all, since this is not about guns, this is more about this sport is more about being able to concentrate, to do your thing, to be there in the moment, to achieve your goal, to hit the target. So rather than associating this with people going around shooting other people. I associate it much more with other kind of activities, like for example, archery, or like let's say Zen archery, Kyudo, which involves a lot of like being concentrated, sort of med entering into a meditative state to just hit the center. So in the end, it does not matter what instrument you use to achieve the state, the important is that you're able to get into that. But since today's presentation is not about uh, air rifles, not even about um, like using bows and arrows, today's presentation is about air pistols. So, first thing I want to tell you that this is not an exclusively male sport. There are more women than men in this kind of sporting activity, which is quite weird, I know, but this, this is it. It's, it's not a very well-known sport, but there are a lot of girls doing all kinds of disciplines. So, um, before, before going on, I would like to show you a video of what a competition in this sport looks like. And especially because I will be discussing um, the, the analysis of the performance of an Olympic level athlete, I want to show you what being under pressure at the high level competition looks like in this kind of sport, especially for those of you who have never seen something like that. So I'll show you part of the uh, finals of the 2017 European Championship in the 10 meters air pistol that was done in Maribor, in Slovenia, so right here behind the, the corner. So let me find this here. So I will show you just one shot of the final. What you will see will be, there will be like eight athletes. There will be the public behind them who will be cheering them. So up to two years ago, you have to be silent for a final. And the introducer, you can do whatever you want just to disturb them. I don't, I don't like it a lot, but you will see. So this is what the event looks like. So, for next time we can shot load, so they load their air pistols, this is the women final. They say start and have something like one minute to, to shoot, so there's a lot of pressure. So you will see here their score, <coughs> she shot a 8.8, and tell you later what it's about. And she shot. Yeah, what is it? 9.6. Okay. So there is a lot of pressure on these people. Um, and what the article wants to analyze is how can you categorize different kinds of states in which these people are in while they perform. So the first, the first analysis they want to do is to, they're trying to claim that you can differentiate your performance based on two dimensions. So the first dimension, if you can get back to the presentation, is related to your performance. So you can have a really nice performance, you can have a bad performance. At the same time, you can differentiate this kind of state based on how much control you're experiencing in that moment. So what they say, you have these like, 
four different different uh, occasions. So they say that in type one, in which you have a very good performance, a really precise shot, and you have low control of it, this is associated with a sort of parallel processing. You're not thinking too much about your, what you're doing, you're more in a sort of flow-like experience. Because being a top-level performer, you have to spend tons and tons of hours doing the same exact thing up to the moment in which you don't have, even have to think about it. However, during these sort of competitions, because you're under pressure, because there are a lot of people behind you, there's the camera filming you, you get easily outside of this flow state. So you start thinking more and more, and you start uh, wanting to get more into control of your actions. So they say, well, if you, if you get outside of this flow-like state because of pressure or any kind of other uh, factors, you get into more reinvestment of attention. And if you're successful in that, you also can achieve an optimal performance. In the case of what they label as type 3 performance, in which you have high control, but your performance is quite bad, it could mean that you have too much of a task irrelevant focus, and you're also trying to exert an excessive control of what you're doing. So your shot basically goes away. And in type 4, suboptimal performance, low control, it could be related to what he terms as low investment, low effort in what you're doing, or low attentional focus. So, what they say is the following claim. An optimal performance, subjectively, from the, from the perspective of the, of the shooter in this case, can be, be of, two kind, two, of two types. One is the automatic one, the flow state that you want to achieve, associated with like, the best thing you can usually have. The other one is, you are outside of this state, but you have to focus a lot on what you have learned on all the execution of action to achieve that kind of thing. And the same thing is in the case of optimal performance. One case, you're trying to focus, but you do not succeed. In the other case, please come in. In the other case, you're not focused, you're not in a flow like state, you're more into a sort of dreamy state, and you do a bad shot. And what they want to try to find out is whether we can differentiate these two subjective states starting from the brain patterns. So what they want to analyze by using electroencephalography is the, the brain rhythms of these shooters, of, this, of one shooter in this case. So just a brief uh, recap, they will analyze two main, two main rhythms. One is the alpha rhythm and the other one is the theta rhythm. So they're, they're both more or less associated with how relaxed the person is. So the theta one is more associated when the person is about to fall asleep whereas the alpha one uh, becomes more, more pronounced when a person is not doing anything at all and he has like his eyes closed, also when trying to just stay relaxed. And what we'll try to do in order to, to try to detect these four states and their differences, they will do an analysis called event-related desynchronization and synchronization, ERD, ERS. So what they mean by this is that when you have in one of these bands an amplitude decrease, so there's less of this kind of activity, they will turn this as event-related synchronization. So it goes down. Instead of seeing these peaks at this frequency, they will become quite, quite lower, less pronounced. And in the case of uh, event-related synchronization, this activity will increase, so it means that the person is more likely in that kind of state associated with this kind of, of brain rhythms. So if we come back uh, to the well, to do the model they use, the multi-action plan model, what they expect to find from the event-related synchronization desynchronization analysis is that the type 1 uh, and type 4 performances will be related to a synchronization of activity, so the person will be more relaxed, but in one case will be more relaxed because it's in a flow state, it's not exerting too much control, and in the other case it will be too relaxed, but not because it's in a flow state, but just because it's deconcentrated, and it's still performing the shot, that's why it goes bad. In the other case, they expect a desynchronization of activity, meaning that, okay, you have a good performance, but you're not completely relaxed. You're trying to focus a lot. And in the other case, you still try to focus a lot, but you're doing badly. So they want to see what happens in these four, four um, occasions. The case study. So what, what method they, they used. So they had one single participant. Uh, it was a 30-year-old male air pistol shooter. Uh, he was a member of the Italian national team and he participated to several international events, among which uh, European World, World Cup Championships and also the 2012 London Olympic Games. I think this is a picture of the Olympic champion from Japan, if I'm not mistaken. But I think also know this, this, this uh, anonymous Italian air pistol, air pistol guy. So what they asked this participant to do is the following. So first, 
they said, okay, when you get there to shoot, I want you to tell me what is your shooting, what is your action, what, you, what do you usually do, what are the, the several steps you take. So he, he said, okay, I have my stance and balance, check, I have a solid grip on my gun, I have a vertical lift, because you have to get straight onto the target, you aim, you trigger, you time your trigger, and there's also this sort of component called follow through, which means that once you're done with the shot, they, it, it's better if you still keep concentrating on your position and on aiming. Because what happens, and maybe you saw it in the previous video, is that when you're under pressure, you shoot, you put the gun down immediately just to see your score on the monitor. And it usually happens that when you do that, your shot goes a bit off, just a teeny bit a bit. So if you're under pressure, you forget about that. Um, he was also asked to identify his last automated component. So they said, okay, when you're under pressure, on what component of these do you focus more? So he said, okay, I focus on aiming. And they said, okay, you will now perform 120 shots, which is, I think, like standard when you're, when you're like, uh, training. And for each shot, before you start, you have to tell us, okay, <laughs> what is your feeling tone? So how, how do you feel on scale from, from 1 to 10? It was like how activated you are in that moment, so to see if the baseline is the same for all four conditions. And after each shot, he was asked to tell them their control level in that component, so the aiming one, the one in which he has to exert more control when he's under pressure and also how accurate he felt the shot was. And then he was able to turn the monitor on and look at his performance. So the performance, how was it measured? So it was measured uh, based on, well, an objective measure. So what he got, what she, he shot in the target is a classical air pistol target, which is the one I have here. So what it means is, that, so you have the score to go from 0 to 10.9. 10.9 being the perfect center. So as soon as this kind of dot, which is the actual shot, touches the, the inner uh, part of this circle, it's a 10.0. You can get more and more precise, the better you get. And he was also asked to, well, give an estimation of what his um, average score was. So these Olympic level athletes do not score usually less than like 10 point something. It's like the average, otherwise it's bad. A beginner will just shoot everywhere. But it's really hard to achieve. So what they did to, to differentiate these four types of, of performance, they used the score and they used the self-reported control. So type one, low life state, low control, score higher than well that level, than we do. In this case, also high score, but a greater control. In this case, also greater control, lower score, and here again, low score, and also low control. And at the same time while he was doing this, they recorded his EG. A nice animation, huh? Okay, uh, now to the results. First, the, let's say, behavioral ones. So, well, that we have a reminder of well, <coughs> the four types play themselves. So, as you can see, good performance was associated with better shots. Uh, worse performance, like three and four worse shots. He also um, reported better control levels for type two and type three, which is okay, in line with that, and less control for type one and type four. Accuracy level was more or less well, what they expected to be, so higher performance good, otherwise bad, and the only tone they said was more or less the same every time, so it was control for that. And now the cool part. Has anybody of you seen what a what, ear, ear, D, ear, S plot looks like? Or in this kind of analysis? You have been here before this. So this is what they, what they found. <clears throat> so what you see here on the, on the y-axis is the time in which um, the analysis is being done in seconds before the actual shot. So this is three seconds before, minus two, minus one, and when the shot occurs. And here to differentiate the performance on the four types of, of states, type one, type two, type three, type four. And the first thing you will be able to say from visual inspection, which is, well, the only thing you do with this kind of analysis, at least what I uh, noticed, is that, well, there's quite some similarity in type one and type, and type four um, states. And if, these are most related to event-related synchronization, which is in line with what they thought. So, type 1, type 4, low control, activity synchronized, it means higher levels of alpha, oh, this is, oh, this is theta band, it also happen with the alpha. Theta band, you're more relaxed in line with what I think. But in one case, you're relaxed because you're doing good, you're in your state. In the other case, you're more relaxed because, well, you're not that much in your state, you're maybe more, like, drowsy or whatever. And the pattern is quite different when you see type 2 and type 3 performance. It was more related to, an, well, let's say, global event-related uh, desynchronization. 
Additionally, they also looked at where this kind of synchronization and synchronization appeared. And they argued that if you look at the left temporal ERD, uh, this has been mostly associated, also in previous study, with an increased analytical processing and also with an increased attentional engagement. So what they say, what could be here is that, okay, before this person does a bad shot, but is trying too hard to do it, it could be first, well, they're trying to rehearse more or less what they have to do, and second, they're trying to focus too much on what they are doing, or maybe also on additional things that are not related to what you have to exactly do. And this is why the bad shot occurs. Uh, second, uh, they also point to this frontal midline theta event related to synchronization, which they argue is more related to an increased attentional control two seconds before the shot. But it also, well, it's, it's kind of more sustained, let's say, also later. But they also say, well, look here in minus 2 for the type 1, which you have like full experience and good performance. There's also this sort of frontal midline ERD uh, showing up. And they argue that this could be the same exact case as what you see in type 3. However, the cool thing is that following this initial state of attentional control, so let's say two seconds before the shot, I'm there aiming, okay, I have to do this, but then okay. The experienced athlete in a flow state maybe could be able to switch that off, get in the flow experience, and do the shot without by stopping to think about what he has or she has to do. And Another cool thing that I found in the supplementary material, which I want to show you, is that this came along with an interesting video, which I wanted to show you. Let's see if I can show you. So, does it show? Yeah. So, type 4, type 3, type 2, type 1, this is the false state, this is, this is the type 3 that I showed you. You see the desynchronization happening also here in the left part. As time goes on, this is minus, minus 2 from the shot. Here is very well pronounced. Here is practically well. well you do not see it as you go on. Okay, it's a bit slow. It is sustained. It keeps staying there. Well, here you see it's already blue. The synchronization is, well, taking place. Um, here also you see the peak that they, that they mentioned. And then it should turn blue quite fast as soon as we approach uh, zero. So the more blue in type 1, type 4 overall. See? Okay. Yeah. It's showing up here. Here is sustained. It gets to zero. Still aiming. It's there. Trigger. Shot. The second one I will show you, it's related to the alphabet. Here is a bit more complicated. So what they did, they did not take just well, one period of alpha, but they split it into two. So they took like a low alpha and a high alpha and tried to see where there were some differences. But still they're mostly associated with uh, relaxation state. So the, the, the main thing they, well, they noticed in the alpha is especially <coughs> uh, here from the right hemisphere is more visible. Uh, eventually the synchronization, more than in the other case, so it's, it's defined by this uh, red spots on the head, which they also <coughs> claim it's really good brain investment potential, which is the same thing that was present also for the theta band. So they say, well, from both kind of bands we have the same information that at least in the in the type 3 performance, a lot of control but bad outcome, people are maybe investing too much of their of their resources. And maybe we'll be able to tell, oh, another thing, we should also be able to visually tell that there is more blue in type 4 and type 1 compared to type 3 and type 2. But, well, visually I'm not sure about that, and I hope it would be more visible from looking just at the videos, which I find quite cool. Is it this high alpha right hemisphere? So type 3, you see a lot of uh, desynchronization. Uh, <clears throat> red areas, but it's not what happens, well, most of the cases into type 1. Again, it's, it's very hard to tell where this activity is taking place, the exact spot of, of the head, but you can just say something about the global overall uh, state of the, of the brain. So another <clears throat> cool thing is, okay, uh, synchronization or synchronization based on what? And if, if I'm not wrong, they take a period, uh, I think it was a second before the start of these trials to take it to a sort of baseline. So this is like a zero when you're doing nothing, more or less I think it was that, and you see, okay, from there on, does it increase the alpha and theta, or does it decrease the alpha and theta, based on the outcome and based on what they say they feel afterwards. 
And let me also confirm that well, there is some difference. At least there is a ton of relativity, discretization going on in, in type 3. So coming to the conclusion. Hmm. Is there a petition of what I just said? So they argue there is a, there is a confirmation of global synchronization associated with type 1 and type 4. As you can see in the theta band, so a lot of blue here, a lot of blue here, and less blue and more red in the middle, type 1 and type uh, 3, exactly. Uh, they say, as I said, <clears throat> there's a brief attention location for automatic mode in type 1, so this the ear being from the middle and theta, that you find here, followed by the ERS immediately after. So it could be, uh, as I said, they focus briefly, then they disengage, let's go automatic mode and let's do it as we should. And last, type 3, states are associated with higher general arousal, as you can see here from the, from the high alpha, a lot, well, relatively more red than in the other cases, and in particular with the, what they claim to be more like attentional networks, like the, the left part of the, of the brain, so which should happen both in the theta band and also in the alpha band. But, coming to what uh, Shamit said, they say, okay, we have a sort of confirmation of our multi-action multi planet model, so more synchronization of activity here, more synchronization there, but what is the power of what we have? So they ask him to perform 120 shots. So what turns out, they also state in the paper, so first thing is just one shot. We have to do it with our people. But out of 120 shots, for a type 1 flow state, they just had 16 of them, 42 in type 2, just 11 in type 3, oh, where is it? Thank you. And 51 in type 3. <coughs> and well, this is one of the difficulties, because how easy it is for you staying in a room, you're an Olympic athlete, you're used to like super big competitions, and a lot of people, you, you're there with a research or something in your head, how can you get, how easily can you get like trying to exert excessive focus into your task that you're doing, or trying to get in a sort of like flow state because you're into that thing. They say, well, it's quite, it's quite hard. So it may be that in order to achieve that with more people, it would be nice to use EG while doing a very, an actual competition. And it could be that then you get also a lot of more investment of activity in the type 2, and you see more, more uh, event-related synchronization. But again, distribution is not, is not uniform at all. You have a lot, of type, a lot of type 4, like almost half of them. But maybe the guy was very like, I don't know, uh, bored of staying there. Could be also that. Said, oh, let's do some nice shots here and there, okay, because they like it. Oh, I'm, I'm in a flow state 16 times out of like 120. So again, it should be nice, it would be nice to do it with more people and also like having people in the workout with these weird things in the head, which I think will never happen, but <laughs> the future will tell. <laughs> Thank you. Fight even this time because there's not much literature about EG plus air pistol and air rifle shooting. Out there. <laughs> 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 we have to do that. <laughs>